if we get ourselves on the right path and we deal with all of our emotions, is there anything we can do to help those in the spirit world? Uh, just the fact of you dealing the emotion helps those in the spirit world attached to you or, or surrounding you. Yeah. See, what happens in a spirit sense, when you actually feel a causal emotion, the colour of that emotion comes out of you. They can see it actually coming out of you and disappearing. And your body actually brightens up in that area. So, I don't know if all of you are aware of that, but what happens is your emotion is stored in your soul, but your soul's emotions affect your body, right? And it affects your spirit body too. And so when you release an emotion from your soul, your spirit body heals in that particular region where you're restoring the emotion in your soul. And what happens is that they see the difference in you. And so many spirits who are here investigating this path, who are not on the path yet, are here because they can see, oh, well, they were a lot brighter than last time I saw them. And that, whoa, they don't have that dark, gucky stuff right in that stomach and area anymore. Right? And they don't have that really yucky green slime stuff that they had on their shoulder anymore, right? And that's how they see it for me. They can see the changes in your own spirit body. And in doing that, they can say, alright, what has that person been doing to actually make those changes? And so, doing, dealing with your own emotions can help spirits a lot in, in dealing with theirs. But if they're malevolent, if, they're, if they want to harm you no matter what, all the spirit who wants to harm you sees is the emotion they can manipulate. So you might be like in a sixth sphere or fifth sphere condition on earth, but still have one or two emotions. Like one emotion might be left over is unworthiness. A spirit in the first sphere will come along, look at you, see you're pretty bright, but all he really sees is the unworthiness. And all he, he knows, the colour of it and everything in the body. And he, he knows he can manipulate that if he wants. All he needs to do is get a few people angry with you, get a few people upset with you, suggest to you a few things, and before you know it, you'll be off doing something that is getting away from that feeling of unworthiness. So, AJ, you can get fifth and sixth year spirits influencing us negatively. And a sixth year spirit certainly can influence you negatively. So he may be perfect on the natural love path, but what's he going to influence you to do? He wants to, he wants to influence you to not be on the divine love path. Because he actually believes there's no such thing as a divine love path. He thinks it's all a figment of everyone's imagination. So what's he going to influence you to do? He's going to influence you to think, no, go back on the natural love path. Go back on the intellectual development. Go back on the moral development. But don't do this divine love stuff. That's all, that's all crap from his point of view. So a sixth fear spirit can heavily influence you. I, I once had a conversation with myself and Mary just talking about this earlier where in Greece there was this lady directly opposite me in this group. We were in this group and this lady directly opposite me. She sat directly opposite me because she was actually told by her spirits to sit directly opposite me. She had three natural love spirits, very highly developed natural love spirits, feeding her constant questions and information in order to try to disprove to me and to the rest of the group that the divine love path didn't exist. And she stayed in that state all of the afternoon. Now, when she left, there were three mediums who, who could clairvoyantly see spirits in the audience as well. And they came up to me afterwards and they said, did you notice there were three spirits talking to her? <laughs> they were telling her everything to say and she didn't even know. Because it mirrored her beliefs. It all mirrored her beliefs so she didn't even understand she was being influenced. So this is the thing to bear in mind is that even a spirit who's in the sixth sphere can influence you to get away from your connection with God. And remember this is what this is all about. The divine love path is all about becoming at one with God. So spirits in any level can influence you. Usually the spirits in the lower levels influence you in anger and rage and those kind of doubt, fear and all those kind of emotions. Or they influence you morally. So in other words, they see a little Achilles heel, a moral Achilles heel that you have. And it might be, for instance, for a male it might be that he just notices every woman that he sees sexually. That might be 
an emotion that's in him, right? <coughs> and a spirit surrounding will see that. And if they're in the first fear and they want him to have sexual experiences which they can share in, they will influence that. That moral imperfection, if you like, that's in, existing within him. And they will influence that as much as they can. What will have to happen for him? He will have to grow to a point where he no longer wants unloving transactions with women before that influence will stop. Does that make sense? <coughs> once, once he stops having unloving transactions with women, what will happen? No longer that spirit will be able to influence him and they'll go and find someone else <coughs> to influence Jenny. Hey, Jack. Are there any other races in the first sphere that are not human races? No. Could influence? No. Human Many of them present themselves as non-human. So you often hear of clairvoyants <coughs> describing as lizard-type creatures. And, and who's heard of that when they've heard of lizard-type creatures and all that? They are actually spirits. In fact, in the first sphere, many times they are actually a group of spirits. Right, that get together and project an, Im an image of <coughs> their condition into the person. Yeah, and many are attracted to it. Like, who's heard of the dragon forces? Or many of you may have heard of that. Well, that's because people are attracted to these kind of influences. Why? Because they want to feel powerful. Why do they want to feel powerful? Because they feel powerless, and they don't want to deal with that emotion. But the spirits know what's going on in your mind generally, they can read it quite easily. And so a band of them can band together and project an image that would influence you if you are not dealing with your own emotions. So there are many projections of different types of creatures given to people on earth from these spirits in order to control them and manipulate them. Thank you. Yeah. So no matter what you do, you can always blame the spirits? No. <laughs> That's not what I said. Remember I said, it's all happening because of your, your law of attraction. And what's your law of attraction based around? Your, soul your own soul condition. So it's actually all happening because of your soul condition. In other words, it's all happening because of the emotions within me that I'm choosing to hold on to that are disharmonious with love that will cause these attractions. So that's very important to understand.